so we're back in the studio here with the beautiful Carlene. How are you? <laughs> I'm good, and you you're, too. You're always good. You're always good. You're yeah. just a happy person. I right. Like <laughs> I like that. That's why you're Even on the show. If you're not, you just have to fake it. <laughs> That's good too. That's but good life too. has been good, so thank yes. you. Good, good, good. So let's talk about evaluating work slash during shows. I'm not a fan of during shows, so <laughs> this may not go. We'll see how positive I stay. Uh, but let, so how did you... Um, you know, evaluating work for artists is very hard. First of all, art is very subjective, so it depends who's looking at it, exactly. what they think about it. And and you know what? And the other thing is that when you ask people for um, their evaluation, they may not be giving you the, the truth, the whole truth. <laughs> well, they're giving it based on what they know, and if it's not an artist or somebody who creates art, they may not understand how something... Like someone goes, well, why is that red? Well, because when you mix those two colors together, that's what... Right, you know, it could be yeah. something as simple as that. So, how do you, how, when you went from, first of all, how did you know if you're getting better? How do you know if you're getting better in your art? Do you have, can you tell just by looking at it? If you do this painting and do another painting a year later, can you tell if you're better? Yeah, for sure. I think, you know, I've, and I've been so surprised, you know, when last year I fiddled on this painting to yeah. death, right? Yeah. Fiddled and fiddled and fiddled. I'm thinking, I can't, I don't know how else to improve on that. Yeah, yeah. That's, is as good as it gets yeah. and the following year and it's oh it's good you know it's wonderful the following year i look at it and think oh, i see areas where i can actually improve on it like it's so clear to me and i think why is that it's because i have improved yeah. so that's you know that's a great feeling yeah yeah, yeah yeah i know i'm the same um if i look at some of my older sketchbooks here which i date them all i don't know if you can see can't, uh -huh. you guys can't see my studio i date all right. of my sketchbooks so i know when <laughs> That's a good idea. And you the do keep are. them all. I do. I don't throw anything out. I'm very bad that way. But they're all ideas in there. Whether the yes. whether the drawings are good or not, I can go back into those. And even if it's a terrible drawing, that might spark an idea for a cartoon right. tomorrow. So I keep yeah. all of them. Uh, but they show how you go. And I, I like to really do well. Maybe we should do one on sketchbooks. Yes, we should. Because I've got an interesting way that I do my sketchbooks. Yeah, well, I love to do so, that. Um, so anyway, so when I started to improve... What I think is good, other people may not think is good. I don't, so when I became what I call a professional artist, so I went from that point of, okay, it's just a hobby to I'm going to start charging people. I actually paid somebody that I did not know. Right. So I went to ah. Toronto. Mm -hmm. I found an artist. I don't know how I found him. I think I just found him out of the book or I might have asked somebody. But I did not know him. I paid him. Like I just hired him. And I sent him the, um, the artwork ahead of time. And then I met with him. Right. Tell me, tell me if, and I said, tell me if you think I can do this professionally. And he said, your strength is going to be in pen and ink, which it is. <laughs> um, I guess he didn't like the acrylic I gave him. <laughs> but, but I said, okay. So, and then that wasn't the only feedback I got, but that was one. Mm -hmm. And I took that as okay. I need like three pieces of feedback before I can say I can go forward, and that was one. So how did you how did you do how did you know when it was time to jump to being that were you charging? Well what did how would it did so I you know when I started painting on canvases I was like in the studio painting like for two, three years and then thinking, you know, I have to know like if I'm going anywhere with this. Yeah. So I posted it on Facebook was one of the things that I did. Okay. And with trembling hands I kinda <laughs> press the button <laughs> and posted it and said, Oh my gosh, you know what, like how do people react? And of course Facebook is not the best place to get feedback. Right. Um, you know, you've got dear friends who love you anyways, no yeah. matter what, and they just gonna press like. But so that's one thing that I did do. I I um had gone on painting trips with a particular instructor. Yeah. And so I paid him to come to my house, I gave him lunch, and I paid him, and I wanted him, like, just to give me yeah. very clear, uh, his opinion yeah. as to how I progressed, and he gave me some feedback, Right. so, which, you know, which is a, a good way to, to do it, you know, be, like, he's not trying to be your buddy, or, yeah, that's or why, I didn't want, yeah. that was the same, I didn't want someone to tell me just because they're a friend or whatever, and, and this person was already established in the in the art world, so I knew I could trust his judgment. And I wanted an honest, you know, I'm paying him money to give me an honest judgment. Yes. judgment so. Yeah. So do you do juried shows? Have you done juried shows? I have done juried shows before. Um, when you get rejected, that 
you know, when you when your painting is not accepted, it's a like a not a very nice feeling, right. shall we say? And I've seen um, fellow artists who are trembling, you know, just mm -hmm. waiting to hear the results and all that. All that emotions like going, mm -hmm. that's tied into whether you get accepted or not. And I've come to, and I've gone to uh, sh shows openings, a, a jury show, and yeah. I've listened to the jurors talk. And I think I've gathered some, um, you know, thoughts about how they go about it. They mm -hmm. really want to... Uh, curate art, which is across the genre. Right. So if you're the fifth landscape artist, yeah. right, and they only want like three in that category, and they want three in figurative work or you know two in florals, so they may accept those two florals over yours, even yeah. though you may be better painter yeah. than those two florals, yeah. and it's all very subjective. It's somebody's um, and one human. You know, judging the work of another. Yeah. And I've heard uh, jurors talk, for example, just a couple of weeks ago. And he said that he was a juror at a show with another juror. Yeah. And that other juror wanted to give the first prize to this particular painting. Yeah. Whereas he had thought that that painting shouldn't even be in that show. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so he said it was a good thing that there were two of them. And they kind of balance each other out, so they allow the painting to be juried in, but not give them the first prize. So it's really funny. Like another artist who was rejected in a show, yeah. but was given the first prize in another juried show. Yeah, yeah. So that's why um, I don't believe in juried shows. I, uh, the ones that I've gone in, I've gone into a few of them, and this whole rushing down in the morning, <laughs> and dropping off your paintings, and then rushing back like what, six hours later to pick them up if these are one-day shows. And who is able to judge? There was one I did. There was 400 paintings. How is it one person, can you judge 400 paintings quality and everybody pick up what's not been taken at the end of the day? There's no way you can do that properly and be subjective. You're just picking stuff out because you need to pick up. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah. That's why you're here. You keep me on track. Right. <laughs> but yeah. but uh, to me, it's not fair. It's not a reasonable. Yes. And then again, even if it's something bigger where everybody sends it into a magazine or what have you, you don't know the person who's choosing it. Why are they choosing it? I mean, I can look at abstract art and go, I like art, but I don't get abstract. Like, I can't paint abstract. I always want it to look like something. So I'm terrible at abstract. But I appreciate abstract. It looks nice on a wall. But I could not say, okay, that's going to be the painting. Like, if somebody else had something, my friend Tom Richmond had a painting in, and it was a cartoon, I would take the cartoon. Right. But that's because I like cartoons. Yes. Most other people may not like those yeah. cartoons, right? So so I don't know, if, I'm not never a fan of jury shows, um, and I don't like one person being the... Yes. Can I tell you, like I heard, I, I went to the opening reception, and there's one juror said that she gave the first prize to this new figurative painting because she said I can never do anything like that and I and I just so admired it and that's why she gave that's not that's so, not <laughs> like and I'm thinking okay and another person got in and it was a painting retreat a little bit naive um you know whatever however you want to define that yeah. um it was you know but and the and the guy was laughing. I just did that like two days before the show and yeah, I yeah, just yeah. kind of slept and I'm not really an artist and he got in and he was just way over the moon. Yeah. And and I think the jury chose it because it was, they wanted something that was different. They want a representation of art that would appeal to the public when they come and visit right. the show in the gallery. Yeah. So do not be, um, you know, like do not discard your art career because you can get into a particular art. Have you, ever, have you ever had anyone tell you something negative about your art that was in a position where it could have moved your career forward or backwards? Um, you know what? When I went to jury shows and I didn't get in and I asked the jurors to give me feedback, it's, uh, they, they, they've been, yeah, one said, uh, what are you trying to say here? <laughs> she didn't get what I was trying to say. And, you know, but let's say, you know, I was, you know, composition why she didn't, she didn't get uh, what my subject matter was and I probably was lacking in certain aspects of it. And another juror had given me feedback in such a way where I actually felt inspired 
and encouraged to carry on. So that is the one thing when you get feedback. How does it make you feel in right. the end? Does it make you feel empty or does it actually inspire you to go on to do more? Well, I'm the kind of person, if you tell me no, I'll probably go and do it. That's how I work. So I, my first comic book that I put out, I, yeah. I actually was part of an illustration group at the time. And they had a contest where you paid like $20 to enter this contest. And I went to, uh, you may have heard this story, but I went with another girl. The two of us were awarded to this one artist who was judging. And we had to send the stuff ahead of time. So I sent her the comic book ahead of time. And then we went to her home. And the other girl that went with me was beautiful watercolor painting like she yes. really had and her work was gorgeous and i'm sure she's successful i don't even remember her name but i'm sure she was successful today but the the artist that was judging us um didn't read my comic book didn't understand anything about it when got there it just said well you could do better and left it at that and then spent all the other time on the other girl that was there and her art so i said okay that's fine the problem is i'd already printed off two thousand copies of this comic so I've already got skin in the game. I got my money in the game. Mm -hmm. And so um, I just said, well, too bad. And I still put out issues every year after that for a couple of years. And that one comic book, which she told me was no good, uh, I got so much business out of that. Yes. Uh, I sold some, uh, but I also got business by giving it away and having people hire me. And, I, and so the comic book, that first issue cost me $2,000 to print off, and I made $8,000. Right. Income. Yeah. So she wasn't into comics. And yeah, she, well, she wasn't into comics. She was into children's books, which is fine. But that's not the right way. Like, she should have said, I'm not a comic artist or I don't understand comic books. She didn't read the story. In a comic book, if you don't read the story, the art and the story are tied together in a comic book. Yes. So you cannot read a comic book and not look at the art. And you yeah. cannot judge the art and not read the story because right. they are intertwined. Yes. And so... By her not reading the story, she didn't understand what the art was about. She was just looking at it from an art standpoint, mm -hmm. which I I understand, but at the same time, it's gone on since. So I just I disregarded her, and so now I am very uh, big yeah. against people judging. Like I will not take anybody's opinion. That's your opinion. That's fine. You're welcome to to keep it, but. You know, I may not listen to it. Yes. <laughs> you know? And I'm glad I didn't listen to her. Right. You have to take what, you know, you have to take snippets of it, yeah. um, whatever resonates with you, yeah. right? And like that one juror who gave the talk, he said it's, um, a juror has to be very objective. You have to have the skill of being very objective. You don't just choose, you know, jury work into yeah. the show just because you like that genre and, you yeah. know. And how do you tell technique? Once a painting's done, unless you see the person painting it, how do you tell technique? How do you tell that brush stroke? It may look nice. It may be part of the art, the way they do a brush stroke. Uh, if you think of the old masters with the pointillism and all that kind of stuff, like it looks great. It's part of the painting. But, you know, a lot of them will say, well, I don't understand. I, that technique is different. How, how do you know what that technique is? Is it because I did the brush stroke down as opposed to cross? Like, you know... So it's very different the way that, um, that's why I'm really against people telling you what to do with your art, business, anything like that. Like, just go for it. I've been told no so many times in my life. I have a whole presentation called, how many times have I been told no? I've been told no that many times. I was told, don't get into trucking. I was told, don't start an art business. I was told, don't do this, don't do that. And I've, I've done them all and right. succeeded. So Yeah. Do you know, you, you just told me that Michael Hyatt is one of your favorite yeah, authors, yeah, yeah. and he said that one of his books he was rejected 27 times yeah. before he got, yeah, he wow, 27 again. times. Yeah. I think I might have printed like the third time maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. I think if you keep going, you'll be you'll be uh, really into there. So um, what, what, what are we talking, we're, we're talking, what are we talking about? We're talking about improving now. So how do we, how do you improve your work? What's your... Do you have a process for improving from the last painting? Yes, you know, there, there was a, a time when, um, you know, the, the thing that was thrown out there is to do your 10,000 hours. Yeah. So, okay, 10,000 hours. I'm I at 9,999. Yeah. I got one more hour to go. I'm good. <laughs> but, you know, you could do 10,000 hours and still not find improvement in your work because you're doing the you know, the, the, the same thing over and over again. So the thing is to do what you call targeted, um, like directed um, practicing yeah. 
where where are you weekend? Uh, I'm not. I don't throw hands for a while, and therefore maybe I should spend entire week just look reading books yeah. and drawing them again and again. So so when you do that again and again, you can't help but improve, yeah. right? So it, there has to be that. And I think the other thing is to you know I I just uh, looked at a, um, a video about this young student who who went to this very old master, he's, yeah, yeah. He's, but in this modern time, he went to his studio and painted with him like for weeks and months at a time. And that old master would actually spread out all the books of painters that have gone on before him. Now he's a master, he's a modern yeah, day yeah, yeah. Um, portrait artist. And uh, he would have all the books spread out and compare his work with yeah. these masters. What did they do there? What did they do this? And this student one night, um, he was doing this portrait and it, and it just didn't look good. So he got up in the middle of the night and he hung his work right beside this master and, you know, got an epiphany. Okay, I didn't do that and yeah, this yeah. needs a bit more light. So, um, yeah, that's what I got up from him. So you really need to. I find that, you know, just being in the hot seat and being... I, I, I don't learn very well in just script, just drawing. Yeah. Like, like when I was learning caricatures, I did, you know, they in the caricature world, they say do 10 faces a day. So, mm. and even if you make them up, like keep working on 10 faces a day. Right. I tell a lot of my students, make sure you draw at least an hour a day. I always still try to draw at least an hour a day. Right. Uh, but I find that when I'm, where I really learn is when I'm trying to put something together, whether I'm trying to put a comic book together or whether yes. I'm trying to put, uh, you know, learn a technique that I'm going to be paid for, you know, like learning caricatures. So for me, my training is when I'm actually doing events, you know, and, and I find that if I just do adult events all the time, where it's mostly heads, I lose doing bodies. So I like to do kids parties every once in a while to make sure I can still draw soccer players and hockey players. And, right. and I find, and I make sure that I'm doing a lot, enough studio illustration that's in cartooning and stuff so I can always get, always be practicing in different areas. Sure. But I need to do it for something. Or, yes. else, or else I'll go podcast. Like, you know, some artists, they'll draw all day. And if you say, take a 10-minute break, they'll go and draw. Not me. Mm. I'm going to go, like, do email or something. Like, So if, if, if I've got time, I like to do so many things that I could do a podcast as opposed to drawing. Mm -hmm. Maybe when I should be drawing. Mm -hmm. So I have to schedule my day that way. Whereas right. there's a two-hour block every day when I'm actually doing drawing. And, and when is that? Like, it's, I, I find it's at night now. Okay. So, I mean, unless I'm at an event for four hours, then I, that's my drawing time is the event. Right. But if I've got, like, uh, tonight here, we've been podcasting all day, mm -hmm. I'm going to draw tonight. Mm -hmm. And I find I, when I draw during the day, I'm always thinking about, oh, i got something else I need to be right. doing. or yeah. what I, Whereas at night, um, you know, Carmen likes to watch TV. I'm not crazy about half the program she watches. So I could draw that, and I could put the headphones on, I could put the music on, and I can relax and I can draw. Right. And I don't think about anything else but the drawing. And I, I, so I, I schedule a lot of my drawing time at night. Uh, yes, is which is great. Day. And I think I really need to do that. Yeah. Um, like I'm very good at, you know, doing my exercise. No matter what, that comes. That's like, my Okay, point. I have to go. <laughs> so I'll do, no matter how I manage to fit in my exercise. And I'm thinking I should be the same with, you know, doing my faces. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, exercise. So um, that's one of my goals in the new year. There you, gonna, go. <laughs> you know, if I can be that good with one of these routines of mine, yeah. surely I can, you know. And if you look at the, one. you know, if you remember back to the goal episode, I was telling you, uh, drawing, writing, and, and speaking are my three main areas where I, well, in the morning is my writing time. Like I write from six until about eight o'clock in the morning. That's when I'm writing my articles. And then I go to the gym. So during the day is my speaking time, whether it's on a podcast or what have you. And then at night is my drawing time. So I'm still doing those three every right. day. Yeah. I, I may not realize it, but, you know, this morning I had a presentation. My speaking was first thing in the morning. This is a real too speaking early. day. <laughs> so, but that's fine. You know, it's yeah. just today, this week it's about how the schedule works, right? So, mm -hmm. so yes, that's, that's, for sure. So it's cool. So, so how do you know, um, is there some benchmarks that you would put on your work how do you like what do you sell I want to improve by so much and how do you know when you've reached that 
Um, if I if if I can um, execute a painting um, effortlessly, you know, like so. For example, in the beginning, say when I go plein air painting, mm -hmm. you know, and I don't know what to put in on my canvas. I'm having problems with composition, and do I put that tree in and all that? So then I read books or go to workshops and. And then I find that when I am on site, yeah. I'm able to, you know, at least get the sketch down, yeah. the composition down. And then later on, I'm able to put the colors in. And then later on, I'm actually almost able to finish the entire painting. And then can I do it on a bigger canvas? Okay. Instead of an 8 by 10 um, now I do almost all my plan air on like 16 by 20 which right. some people may say is a bit large, but... Um, you know, that's what I yeah. wanted to do. So, so those were the benchmarks for seeing my plein air painting. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. My plein air painting, I just take my sketchbook. <laughs> I actually don't even take the canvas and all that anymore because I don't want the cleanup. Yeah. I just want to be able to walk with my bag and my sketchbook and I stop and then do yeah. that. So, uh, yeah. For mine, I, I don't know if I have specific benchmarks. But I want to get better, and so some of these artists that I follow, like the Tom Richmonds of the world and the Jack Davises of the world, I keep striving to get my pictures to look like them. Right. And every year I notice I get better. I get better at my hands, I get better at my facial features, those kind of things. But I know I'll never reach there because they're getting better as well. So <laughs> So how do you actually, like, let's just talk, you know, practically. Okay. So do you actually put their work in front of you or on the laptop and you kind of look at them? Like, and then do yours at the same no, time? No, I just look at the way, uh, like, I've got a couple of their books here where I will look at the way they've laid out a scene um, or they've ha yeah. how the way they've positioned people in the scene or, uh, like, because Tom Richmond, he, he considers himself a humorous illustrator, not necessarily yeah. a comic artist. He's a humorous illustrator. And so how does he fill out a mad magazine layout? They give him mm -hmm. the text. They tell him, you know, how many boxes it's going to be or whatever. How right. does he do that? How does he do it so the story reads and you see the key people, but yet he's got a million people in this right. thing, but I can still understand it. He's got a hundred people in a picture, yet you can still focus your yes. eye on two or three, okay. which are the main characters. So how does he do that? That's what I'm looking at all the time. Uh, for Jack Davis, I like the way he does everybody's shoes. I'm always trying to do shoes like him. And the way he does his background, which is pretty basic stuff. The background's pretty well always blue. Like it's mm -hmm. always just one color. He's got the details in there from the drawing, but it's one color, and then the main character is one. So it, right. stand, it pops out to the front. So those kind of things I yes, try to I do and so that it, yeah. it kind of gets that same feel. But they, they do different techniques, so I'll never reach that, but I know I'm getting closer. I can look at my work every year and see I'm getting closer. Yeah, that's the whole world, so. right. Well, that's good. That so, is uh, very directed. Yeah. Uh, and later this year, Tom Richmond's doing... A, um, it's going to be in June, I think. He's doing a workshop here in Toronto. So when I heard that out, he only has so many spots. I signed up. He's been, he's been doing this around the world. He's been going to wow. different areas. He lives in Minnesota, and so he goes to different places, England, everywhere. He puts on these workshops. So they Is fill up very the first fast. time coming to Toronto? Uh, he's been in Toronto, and I've met him uh, many times in Toronto and at ISCA conventions, but this is the first time taking one of his uh, formal workshops, as you say. So it's... Uh, it's a good deal. So I signed up, and uh, I'm hoping I can cater him around and get some. He's here for a weekend, so I'm hoping to get some extra time and uh, cater him you around. You'll buy him a room in your apartment, uh, in your know, apartment building. He's, yeah. he's already going to get his room, but uh, you yeah. know, I've offered to pick him up at the airport <gasps> and those kind of things. Is that right? right? So oh, get some wow. extra time if possible. Yeah. We'll see how it works out. I know do you both right. communicate right now? Like, are you... We do. I follow I follow him uh, when he's at a comic book convention. I take pictures with him. Oh, I, I've okay, met so... him for... I've met him for years, like I've known him for years. He may know of me, you know, I yeah. sort of know him better than those. I wouldn't say we're not friends or anything, but you know, right. I can see him in a comment and we'll talk and stuff. Yeah, but, uh, he probably uh, remembers you. This is his work up here. Uh, I can't see okay. him. That, yes. the, that one at the end, that's his yeah. style of work, which wow. is, I just love. Uh, so, I mean, he's a, he's somebody I follow every day and see his posts and I'm always commenting and liking and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so, and his heroes are the same heroes that I've had. They, Right. Yes. So, yeah. Wow. That'd be exciting. <laughs> Something to look forward to. Yeah. So I'll let you know how that that'll be a whole episode on itself. What it was yeah, like. So. Sure. And I'm actually hoping to have him on the show. I need to reach out to him and um, for 2018. I'm hoping to have him on the show here. So. 
while he's here in Toronto. Yeah, right? well, Just... I'm going to do it that way. I'm hoping to do one beforehand to help him publicize the show. So we'll see how it goes. So. That would be great. Yeah. See that you'll be of value to him. And well, I'm that's sure the whole. I'm trying to be of value to everybody, right? So, yeah. so it goes good. For so, sure. so um, uh, give us one tip on improving your process. Just one tip. Let's one, one tip to to improving your painting. Well, I guess you have to take classes. Learn, learn, learn. Like, do you find you learning classes? Um, I have to be careful about not taking too many classes in one go because you really need some time right after your class, whatever it is, workshop, to assimilate what you learned. If you uh, finish that class, say it's a whole day class or a week class, yeah. and you move on to something yeah. else, all that you have um, you know, learned during the workshop is not being used. And then you're gonna, like, it's as good as giving it back to the instructor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, make sure you know as much as you can you know schedule one week where you actually do paintings using the techniques that's right. that you learned during the yeah. workshop so yeah. then you do see because that's why you wanted to take the workshop in the first place right to improve i uh, don't necessarily learn a lot in classes i'm like you i learn it after i come back in the studio so i will take a lot of notes in a class yeah and then usually i just try to apply them on the next project or whatever I'm doing. right so, so, so one tip for me would be to just um, dedicate time each day to doing that. Just I'm all about consistency, whether it's the podcast or drawing or whatever. For me, it's all about just keeping going, and even if it's not what you want today, tomorrow will be. Yes, again, so. if you're one percent or half a percent, you're still better than last better time. than yesterday. <laughs> you're still making progress, yes. right? And Perfect. I just remember that favorite story, you know, the the turtle and the hare. Yes. Like who wins out in the end. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Well thanks again for being in thank the studio. Thank you. It was a great time.